So I'm going to, uh, we're going to start with our imaginative prayer. Um, so I want everybody to, to close your eyes, and we'll take just a couple deep breaths together. This helps us calm our body a little bit. And let me just pray for us. God, I pray that you will release our imagination and help us to hear you speak to us during this time. We open our hands to you and we open our ears to you. And if you want, if you're comfortable, if you want to just open your hands, you don't have to. Come, Holy Spirit. So I want you to imagine with me that you're on a walk with some friends. And there's lots of friends. Imagine there are 100 of you walking through the countryside, over hills, crossing streams. You're on a nature hike someplace in the wilderness. And imagine that you're feeling really safe. You're surrounded by a group of people, and you aren't really worried about where you're headed right now because somebody is leading you, and you're following the crowd as it walks through a grassy field, though there doesn't seem to be a trail to follow. Next, imagine that you spot something colorful at the edge of the forest. It looks like a bright spot in the middle of a brown tree trunk and green leaves. And you want to take a closer look to see what this bright and colorful spot might be. It isn't very far away from everyone else, so you leave the crowd of friends just for a moment to take a closer look at what you've discovered. And so you're walking now all by yourself as you head towards the edge of the forest. You can still hear the others chatting as you continue toward the bright spot in the trees. However, as you walk, you discover that the bright spot is actually much farther away than you had thought. So you arrive at the very edge of the forest And the bright spot is nothing more than an old orange hunter's hat. It's bright orange. And it was left behind by someone long ago. And you notice that it's just stuck there on the edge of a branch. It looks pretty worn out, so you decide to just leave it behind. But as you turn back to join your friends, you notice that they are pretty far away. They're off in the distance in the valley. And you can see them turning a corner off in the distance, and they head into the forest. You begin to run as fast as you can in order to catch up. But you realize that you're in a bit of trouble as you watch the last one of your friends head into the forest. You continue to run fast in order to catch up. But the time, by the time you reach the place where they entered into the forest, they are nowhere to be found. You are alone, and you are lost. Imagine that as you stand here all alone, At the edge of the forest, you begin listening for voices. Though you can't see your friends, you wonder if you maybe are really quiet and you listen hard enough, perhaps you will hear them, and so you wait. You don't hear anything, and so you begin to go down a path through the forest. You notice that it's getting darker and the wind begins to pick up. And it's also getting colder. The sun is beginning to set. You are alone 
and you are lost. And then, to make matters worse, it begins to rain. You find some shelter underneath a hemlock tree. You begin to wonder how this could happen. How could you have gotten lost? There are 99 others somewhere in this forest, and you are the only one who's lost. You're the only one who's alone. What does it feel like to be alone and lost? Imagine what it would be like to be cold and wet and in the dark. You begin to shiver, and as you reach for some leaves to cover you up, suddenly you hear a gentle voice calling out your name. You crawl quickly from underneath the tree to look around for the voice. And imagine looking up to find that it is Jesus. He wraps a blanket around you to keep you warm. You walk through the woods and come out into an open clearing where the whole group is standing. They had been looking for you all along. You noticed, they noticed that you were missing, and they stopped walking in order to look for you. They noticed that you were missing, and they stopped walking in order to look for you. What does it feel like to be noticed, to be looked for, and to be found? What does it feel like to be the one that Jesus came looking for? There are so many things in the world that God loves. Of all the things he loves in the world, the most important is that he loves you and that he loves me. And he loves you so much that when you are lost, he will come looking for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So I want you guys to repeat after me, okay? When I'm lost, he will come looking for me. When I'm lost, he will come looking for me. So what will God do for you if you get lost? That's right. When I'm lost, he will come looking for me.